world famous Sunset Strip. Here you may see in the flesh the great names of show business that you've only watched on the screen before. Look, there's Jane Mansfield. No, it isn't. It's Kim Novak. No, it isn't, lady. Then who is it? It's nobody. What can I do for you? Did you tell me where the Jail Hotel is? Yeah, you just passed it. It's on the corner. It's not there. Right over there and back of the rack. Oh. Oh, hey, I'm gonna go get myself a Coke. Anybody want one? Oh, I'm sorry. Excuse me. Sure. It's all right. Hey, kid, you yeah. uh, like to go to shows? Yeah. Put that card in your window and there's a couple of passes for you. Thanks. Thank you. Now, don't disappoint us. We'll be looking for you. Steady, Olga, steady. Here. Thank you. I'm just terrible with mechanical things. <laughs> oh, excuse me, Ronnie. Oh, hey, listen, can I take this with me, all right? Uh, there's a deposit. It's all right. Oh, thank you. Bye. Man, that's what I call... Boy, I'd sure move over for that. Funny, he reminds me of somebody. That's the fifth time today that Miriam Caswell's come out of her father's lumber yard and gone to the Sunflower Sweet Shop. Now watch. In a second, she's gonna come out, look around like she forgot something. Then she's gonna come over here and she's gonna say, Hi, Ken. Fierce today, isn't it? And I'll say, What do you know about that?
Huh? Hi, Kenny. My, but it's hot. Yeah. It's fierce. Well, uh, it certainly seems cooler on this side of the street. Yeah. We'll be seeing you. Oh, are we still going roller skating Monday? Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. You know, Kenny, you spoil, you get too much. Well, not from old Miriam Caswell, that's for sure. I used to live here. What? In this town. Well, you gotta be kidding. No. From the time I was 12 till I was um, just 15. Because, see, when my folks died, I was sent to live with my Uncle Malcolm and my Aunt Hazel in Sharon Springs, but they already had three kids of their own. So they sent me to board here with some people called the Williamses, because the Williamses needed the extra money. Rick? Hmm? Listen, if I ever went away, would you miss me? Well, sure I would, baby. Then if you really love me, we ought to be married by now, huh? Oh, come on. Oh, come on yourself, Rick. It's what I want. I think it's the only thing I want anymore. Yeah, yeah, well, just lay off it for now. We'll get married, but lay off it for now, huh? Yes? Uh, uh, my watch has stopped. What time is it? Just about seven. Seven. Oh, I'm so pleased you're taking me to the show tonight, Kenny. It's real sweet of you. You didn't touch a dessert. Something wrong with it? No, just didn't like it. Well, you know, after I come home from a day's work at the hospital, I just don't have the energy to bake you a pie. <laughs> Let's, let's try to make things as pleasant as possible. Hmm? Just that I didn't like the dessert. Well, it's not just the dessert. Lately, you've been irritable and impatient about almost everything. And you are smoking too much. I don't know if you realize it or not, but you know you're smoking about two packs of cigarettes a day. Now, it's not just the... Kenny, please, I'm trying to talk to you, and it's rude to walk Mom, away when... Mom, am I a pest something... around here? Hmm? You know how I feel about you, Kenny. You're all I have to live for. Ever since Dad died, I've taken care of everything, haven't I? Hmm? Well, the lawn, take care of the furnace. I know you do. But if you're not after me, the lawn or the furnace, it's college, Miriam Caswell. Well, now you should go to college. After all, today it's a necessity. After all, you've been out of high school a year and a half now. Yeah, I go to college, get yanked out the minute I'm drafted. Big deal. Oh, Kenny. You're going to have to learn to stand on your own two feet. Mom, what are you going to do when I move out of here, huh? What are you going to do? I'm going to miss you very much, son. You'd better hurry if we're going to make that show on time. During the reign of terror in France, a machine was introduced capable of dealing death. And perhaps its most famous and fabulous victims were King Louis XVI and Marie Antoinette. And now for your marvelous mystification, the guillotine and the girl.
it's Helen. Helen Baird. Oh, for goodness <laughs> sake, Helen! Oh, oh, when I looked up on that stage and saw your head roll into that box, I said to myself, can that be that darling Lila Green? I, well, you know, it's my makeup and my new clothes. And your hair. Oh, that's right, my hair used to be honey blonde. Yes. <laughs> Isn't it oh, for some... goodness sake. Oh, listen, Helen, I want you to meet Ricky Powers. Ricky's our MC and manager. Oh, Ricky, I want you to say hello to Helen Baird. She and I used to live next door to each other when I was a kid. Oh, how do you do, Mr. Powers? How do you do? Oh, and is that Kenneth? Yes. Well, you were the boy at the filling station. Yeah. Hey, do you know I used to be your babysitter? And you were the cutest kid. You were just adorable. Hey, Ricky, this is Kenny. Hello. There's the young man. He didn't disappoint us. Helen, I want you to meet some other friends of mine. This is Ronnie Cavendish, the great Ronaldo. He's a real pal. How do you do? And this is Madame Olga St. Valentine. She's a very great actress, and she's played in London and New York, and she's met Noel Coward. Well, I'm very honored to meet you. Oh. Don't listen to her, my dear lady. Lila exaggerates all our virtues. Actually, I'm just a poor, humble artist who loves her work more than life itself. Olga, that's Kenny. Oh, may we be, yes, sir, may we. My, what a magnificent performer he would make. My son hopes to become an aeronautical engineer. Mm. Pity. Olga, I'm famished. If you'll all be so kind. <laughs> Honey, I don't mean to rush you, but I'm bush. So I'd like to turn in. Oh, Helen, it's just been great seeing you. Lila, uh, why don't you and Mr. Powers come and have Sunday supper with us tomorrow night? Yeah, fine, sure. That's wonderful. Yeah. I can't wait till tomorrow night. Oh, okay, 6.30 then. You remember the address? Oh, how could I forget it? <laughs> Bye. Good night. Bonnie, what's money in already? Well, I'm not going. I changed my mind. I just feel out of place, don't you? Well, Helen wouldn't have invited you if she didn't want you to come. I know, but... Oh, well, listen, if you don't feel good, I'll stay home with no, you. No, no, you go on. Go ahead. You sure? I mean, you're not mad or anything? No, of course not. You go on. Have a good time. Go ahead. Only, uh, watch yourself, huh? Why notice the look that kid gave you? Ricky, sometimes I think you forget decent people exist. Do they? House looks just great to me. Hey, you remember the last night I was here? No. It was the night of your fifth wedding anniversary. Oh, my God. You remember you had this big dinner party and you invited me? Yeah, of course I remember. Hey, isn't that the watch that Mr. Baird gave you that night? Mm-hmm. It, um, it hasn't been working very well lately, but you know, I just can't bear to part with it long enough to have it fixed. Isn't that foolish? <laughs> I suppose it's because it was the last thing he ever gave me. Gee, you know I never even told you, Helen, but I had the biggest crush on your husband that any 12-year-old could possibly have. <laughs> you did? He was just my ideal. I said, someday I'm going to have a husband just exactly like him. 
I used to measure every man I met by your father. I'd meet a man and I'd say to myself, now, is he as nice as Mr. Baird? Is he as kind and intelligent and understanding? I'm on a talking, Jack. I really ought to go. Oh, no. Yeah, I have a lot of packing to do. Oh, that's too bad. Yeah. Let me walk you back to the hotel. Oh, Kenny, you don't have to do that. No, no, I'd like to. Well, thank you. Oh, honey, get a jacket or a sweater or something. I don't want you coming down with a summer cold. Yes, ma'am. I'll be right back. Gee, it's just amazing how much Kenny looks like his dad. Yes, he does, doesn't he? Yeah. Oh. You know, I did used to judge every man by Mr. Baird. I guess lots of times I fool myself into thinking some guys were better than they really are. Oh, here, let me help you with the dishes. Oh, no, now, please. Oh, come please, on. No bother, really. Lila, hmm? how come you never got married? Well, I did get married once. Oh. I just don't like talking about it much. I, are you serious with this, uh, what's his name? Ricky? Ricky? Well, he certainly isn't anything like Mr. Baird, but, you know, he's somebody I can sort of depend on. See, actually, Olga found him in Long Beach. First they had a thing, and then he started dating me. Y you mean Madame Olga and Ricky were, oh, well, just for a little while. Well, you sure know lots of different kinds of people, all right. Ready? Ready. Gee, it's too bad we didn't have more time to visit. Oh, ships that pass in the night, that's yeah, us. You promise to write to me often now, and I'll be sure to answer. I promise. Oh, gee, thanks again. It was just great to eat a home-cooked oh, meal. Oh, it was my pleasure. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. Kenny, don't stay out too late. Tomorrow's a working day, you know. Yeah, don't remind me. Aren't you a little, uh, you all right? Yeah. <laughs> you a little warm in this? Yeah, but it's my proudest possession, because it's practically the only thing I got to show for all my years in the business. Hey, tell me something. Hmm? Y you know, how to do that part of the act where they, uh, where chop, they chop, my head chop off? your head off, yeah. Oh, that's an illusion. You know, like, presto, something looks like one thing and then it's something else again. Yeah, well, I know, but uh, how they do it? An illusion is an illusion. Besides, Ricky keeps saying I shouldn't give away trade secrets. But I know what you mean. Sometimes it's kind of hard to tell what's real and what isn't. I am nobody. Who are you? Are you nobody, too? Then together there's a pair of us. Don't you just love that, Emily Dickinson? Hi, Kenny. Hi. Is that your girlfriend? Miriam? No, nah, she's just a girl who hangs around. Oh, Kenny, you ought not to talk like that if a person's feelings are sincere. Come on, let's cut through here. It's shorter. walked through here since the night before I left for Hollywood. Just imagine. Mother said that you won some sort of a Miss Lookalike contest. Oh, honey, I won three. One of them right here. Here I was Miss Lookalike Betty Grable. And then in a San Bernardino, I was Miss Lookalike Rita Hayworth. And in Pomona, I was Joan Crawford's spitting image. <laughs> that funny? I expected to hit it right off the features. Introducing Lila Green. Instead, I ended up with Gladys Boomer and her Texas blondes. You mean Gladys Boomer, the movie star? Yeah. Oh, well, she is now, but then she was the star of the Saw Girl show. I was a Texas blonde for about three years until Gladys got her big break, and then we had split up. That must have been tough. Oh, it wasn't so bad, because she sent me to see her agent, and he was the one who got me my screen test. You had a screen test? Yeah. You want to see it? 
was for Pard and Daddy Longlegs. You know the Fred Astaire picture? Yeah. There. Well, be, be, be very careful and don't get any fingerprints on it. Oh. Are you dancing here? Oh, I was singing and dancing both. Honest? Yeah. So anyway, I didn't get the studio contract. But I did get those film clips for a souvenir. And you know something? Every time I look at those film clips, I say to myself, Honey, you didn't quite make it, but you almost did. And who knows? Maybe one of these days I will make it. So you know, a lot of stars get started late, especially these days. Ooh, here we are. Kenny, thank you for walking me home. That's all right. You're leaving in the morning, huh? Yeah, first thing. We're gonna go play some place called, uh, Versailles, Missouri. Doesn't sound <laughs> wild? Well, I guess we'll be seeing each other again. Ships that pass in the night. Yeah. Goodbye, Kenny. Good night. Good luck. Disaster. Something's happened to Ricky. He's had an accident. Only he had. Sit down, dear. Ricky's gone. Phone the coop. With the payroll our and the car, the our props, money. everything. 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 Vanished into thin air. Well, Ronnie and I were dining at the Paradise Cafe. Never trust a man who shaves twice a day. I don't believe it. There must be some mistake. Ricky wouldn't hurt a fly. Only Fred. Show her the wire. Well, I think how I saved that creep from the promenade in Long Beach. The ungrateful, Regret dirty little... Regret cancellation of your remaining tour. Regards. Marvin G. Burncrantz, Top Flight Talent Tours. But what do we do now, fellas? Well, I telephoned a friend of mine in St. Louis. He's in the decorating business. The best people there get decorated by him. And he said he'll put up Og and me for a while. Well, I don't know anybody in St. Louis. Do you think your friend could put me up to Oh, honey, Eugene has three rooms and four cats. And one of them's expecting. That's the big mommy cat. <laughs> Say, why don't you call those friends of yours? With that gorgeous young man in the house, I wouldn't mind changing places with you. Well, Og, I couldn't just barge in on him. Honey, any port in a storm. Everything's ended, isn't it? The whole world. It's funny I lived in this one so long I've forgotten what the other one's like. No, no. We'll be back together again real soon. And remember, we're not jobless. Merely between engagements. As the saying goes.
She's here. Now you be nice to her. Of course I'll be nice to her. Lila? Oh, hi. Oh, goodness. Let me give you a hand to that. Here, I'll take it. Oh, no, Please. listen here. You take it. Well, I'll, I'll come along. Well, right. oh, you know, it's so late. I, I was getting worried about you. Well, I didn't know what time you finished work at the hospital, so when I checked out of the hotel, they let me watch TV in the lobby. Oh, listen, Helen, are you sure it's no bother my staying here? Now, Lila, what kind of a world would this be if we didn't help each other? Come I on. know, but it seems like you've always been helping me out oh. <laughs> since I was a little girl. Nonsense. You're going to have Kenny's room. Oh, on. no. Listen, I don't want to put Kenny out. I'll be perfectly comfortable on the day, Beth. Lila, it's all settled. Come on. Oh, I hate the idea of putting somebody out. Oh, stop worrying. Kenny doesn't mind, do you, honey? No. Hi, Lila. Hi, Kenny. Listen, it's awful sweet of you. Only too glad to. Doesn't my son look spiffy? Yes, he looks very handsome. Oh, come on. oh you know you love it. Mm. Don't be too late. Not tomorrow's the work day. Good night, Lila. Good night. He's dating a perfectly darling little girl across the street. Oh? He must have had some reason for doing what he did. I mean, I couldn't be mistaken about that. Not like I was about Ed McCloskey. Who is Ed McCloskey? Oh, well, that's the guy I was married to. Oh. Hey, how do you like that? I got that on the coast at Pacific Ocean Park. Isn't it groovy? Yeah, it's very nice. He's Chinese. Hard to flip the things oriental. <laughs> this uh, Ed McCloskey, what, what did he do? Well, did you ever hear McCloskey Brothers comedians? No. No? Well, it was a so-so variety act. Of course, they did play the old Roxy on Broadway once. Helen, you never heard of such people. They were from another world entirely. You mean there was something peculiar about this Ed? Oh, no, no, no. He was just a little weak. But the other McCloskey brother, Vincent, he wasn't Ed's brother. He was his father. Gee, Helen, I ought not to tell you about this. It might shock you. Well, don't forget, I'm a registered nurse, you know. Oh, yeah. Well, let me tell you. You see, Ben sent Ed out as an advance man on this tour. And the minute he went out of town, old Ben started coming into my room. Your husband's father? Like I said, from out of space. I not only had to keep my door locked at all times, but I had to put on a double chain. Well, I would have gone straight to his wife. She couldn't have cared less. She was swinging with some xylophone player. And then there was hanky-panky between the xylophone player's wife and some grip or electrician or something. I don't remember. I never heard of such people. I hope you told your husband. Oh, well, first he didn't believe me. Then he says I should be broad-minded and let old Vince have his way. How horrible. Well, you see, Ed was scared of Vince. Always made me feel kind of sorry for Ed. You know, I think most men are like that, Helen. I think they just can't help letting you down. What did you finally do? Well, I, I woke up one morning and I, uh, I was feeling so fearful and anxious that I, I got on a bus. 
I didn't even know where it was going, and I didn't care. I just went with it. And I ended up in Bismarck, North Dakota, in the middle of winter and in the middle of nowhere. And I locked myself in a hotel room, and I wouldn't see anybody. And then some people found me. Found you? Oh, that's just a matter of speaking. Helen, you know, I don't know what I would have done if you hadn't let me come here. And I'm going to help you around the house like I did when I was a kid. I'm going to cook, and I'm going to clean, and I won't be any trouble to anybody. I promise, okay? I want you to have this. Oh. I got it in San Francisco. No, I can't. Oh, come on. Oh. It's more you than me. Oh, it... There. Oh, that looks lovely. out of space. Still say that somebody tripped me. You've had a little too much to drink. Jelly shouldn't. Uh, are you are you trying to say that uh, Sonny Shepherd's better skated than me? Well, now uh, you were good in math and science, and Sonny, well, Sonny just excels in skating. You can't compete at everything, you know. drive we're not going anywhere oh kenny stop it please oh, kenny stop you're it, being please. silly really Shh, everybody will hear you everybody's too busy except us oh kenny i think i better take the bus oh you think you're so stuck up miriam you're so superior i do not i'm just not like that girl over there well that girl over there looks pretty good to me miriam pretty good because all she wants is a boy's physical attentions Physical attentions. Woo! Where'd you get that one, Miriam? I just want you to be nice, that's all. I'm gonna be me, Miriam, just me. This conversation's getting ridiculous. I've known you all my life, and now you're a stranger. You know I care. You don't have to prove anything with me. Prove what, for instance? I don't know. Yes, you do. Prove what? All right. How manly you are. I'm sorry, Kenny, you asked me. You're so darn smart, Miriam. You're too smart for me. I think you better take the bus. Hey, Miriam, come on back. I'm sorry, Miriam. So much to happen, huh? It's none of our business. Pardon me for living. <laughs> Come on, boss, let's get loaded. Okay. 
Whatever seems fair. your trunk. No. No, not Lila. I, I just had a little drink with some of the fellas, you know. We're... It's all right. You don't have to apologize to me. I'm not your mother. Yeah. Listen, you know you got your shoes on. <laughs> don't you have any pajamas? I don't wear them. Oh. Hey, Lila. What? Is it true that all actors are wild? No, 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 really, it's no fact. Go to sleep, you wait too much. <laughs> when I was a kid, do you just kiss me goodnight? You're not a kid anymore. Well, I wasn't a kid last night, but you kissed me last night. I kissed you like I was your big sister. Well, why don't you kiss me goodnight, like tonight, like you was my big sister? Oh. Teen store. No kidding. Silence and Centennial, 1862-1962. That's nice. Sandra? Sandra, don't bother the lady. Oh, ma'am, she's not bothering me. We're just getting acquainted. Oh, but well, I'm Catherine Mulvaney. And you must be Lila. That's right. Helen told me you were coming to stay. Well, just for a little while. Helen said you once lived in my house. That's right. When the Williamses had it, I used to board with them. Well, won't you come inside and have a cup of coffee with me? We could get acquainted. Well, I, I'd like to, but I, I really ought to get back and fix breakfast. Some other time, okay? Anytime you like, Lila. You're always to feel at home in our house. Thank you. Oh, here's Sandra. Bye-bye. Bye, Mrs. Mulvaney. Bye. Oh, good morning. Hi. Well, my guest seems to be very active this morning. Oh, <laughs> I was over visiting with your neighbor lady. Gee, she seems nice. Yes, she is. But you know, I just can't believe I'm old enough to have a little girl like hers. I just can't picture it. <laughs> oh, hey, Helen, I got breakfast already. Oh, no, that's all right. This is all I ever have. Oh. 
Miss Mulvaney invited me in for coffee, but you know, I couldn't bring myself to go into that house. I hope I didn't offend her or anything. Lila, did you hear Kenny when he came in last night? No, why? I was just wondering. You know, Kenny worries me sometimes. It's, it's so hard raising a boy without a father. Oh, Helen, he's going to grow into just as fine a man as his father. You know he is. No, I don't know that. He drinks, you know. Not often, but often enough. And he, well, he doesn't seem to have any sense of responsibility. But lots of kids are like that at his age. He'll outgrow it. No, he doesn't seem to want to make something of himself. Now, to me, a young man's life is a precious thing. And the kids today seem to have no direction at all. Maybe it's the unsettled conditions of a world or something, but... but I feel now that Kenny's at a turning point. He can grow into a fine, responsible citizen, a wonderful profession, and... or else turn into a drifter from one job to another, never amount to anything. It's so important to find a place in this world. Yeah, I know. And it's so easy for a boy to be twisted by bad influences. Yeah. I love him so much. I, sometimes I don't know what to do. He gets so anxious about him, I probably bungle things and do the very thing I shouldn't. Helen, did you ever think about getting married again? I couldn't. When Richard died, I... Nearly lost my mind with grief. I still can't accept it. I guess there are some women who can love just one man in their lives, and when that love is taken away, they just have to face being alone. If I lost a husband like Mr. Baird, I don't know what I'd do. Time helps. And Kenny. My dreams for Kenny. Yeah, it'll work out. It usually does. Kenny. Kenny, I know you're awake. Mm -hmm. Mr. Austin is going to be very angry if you're late again. Mm -hmm. Well, it's not my concern. I can't be late. Oh, Lila, you can fix breakfast for him if you like, but don't pamper him. Any adult who plays childish tricks shouldn't be pampered. See you tonight. Bye. Hi. Hi. How do you feel? Kind of hungover? Hey, Lana. Hmm? Did I do anything last night I shouldn't have? I'm... Was I all right? You were pretty drunk, but apart from that, you were a perfect gentleman. Well, that doesn't sound like me. Listen, uh, I'm gonna fix you some breakfast, okay? Food will make you feel much better. Yeah. I'd like some breakfast. Some pancakes and sausage and tomato juice, huh? All of that? But it's not too much trouble. No, I can fix it like that. Oh. Hey, Lila? Yeah. Sure do like having you here. I like being here. Hey, what you gonna do today? Gee, I don't know. Hey, you ever thought of doing anything else besides acting? I couldn't give up show business. Besides, what else could I do? I don't know. In high school, didn't you, uh, didn't you take shorthand typing and all that, that sort of stuff? A little bit. Mostly, I stayed away from those hard courses. I took things like... Glee Club and home economics and acting. Because they were fun. Guess I always wanted the fun in this life. Who doesn't? Besides, I'm a good actress. Yeah, I know. Oh. Hey? Uh. I'm one of the Nellie Fourbushes. One of the who? Nellie Fourbush. You know, in South Pacific. I was the understudy in stock once, and they let me go on for the midweek matinee. And after the show, these two ladies came backstage in my dressing room, and they told me that I was better than Mitzi Gaynor and Mary Martin. And they meant it, too. Boy, I just flipped for Rogers and Hermes Dane. <laughs> You 
you've uh, never had experience in an office, Miss Green. Uh, no, sir, not in an office. I'm afraid we'll have to give you the speed test. The speed test? Speed test. Prepare yourself. All right, relax. gonna do i mean if a girl can't even get herself a regular job what good is she well gotta have confidence confidence yeah yeah you gotta have confidence look you got confidence when you uh, go out on the stage don't you yeah but that's different I, d I don't know why it is but it really is oh shoot i'll be all right I guess it's just a civilian type existence is kind of new to me. You know, when you hang around with show people for a long time, you just don't seem to fit in anyplace else. But you don't want to stay home alone. A lot of the dance is a big thing in this town. Kenny, you ought to go with that sweet girl who lives across the street. What's her name? Miriam? Oh, it was some other girl, man. I want to go with you. Kenny, I'm older than you are. You don't look any older than Miriam Caswell or any other girl I go out with. Come on, Lila. You'll have fun. Well, let me think about it, okay? You promise? Yeah. Right. Cross my heart and hope to die. Yeah. All right? Yeah. Thank you. Hey, come on, let's go see if it's open, okay? Come on. Gee, feels kind of spooky, doesn't it? Yeah. Oh, I just think about all the kids that went here. Wonder what happened to them. Where you suppose they all went? First grade room. It is? Come on. those pictures pretty soon. You remember when you used to put up those pictures of the cats and the jack-o'-lanterns and apples and everything? I remember we used to put them up with some kind of awful paste made out of flour and water. I guess little Sandra's going to be putting those pictures up soon, too.
Well, I sure remember my first day in school. My mama had me by the hand. And in the other hand, I had this big bouquet of roses, because mama let me pick all the loveliest flowers in the garden. And I gave them to the teacher. And she thanked me for them. And then my mama left. And I got kind of scared, because I had never been any place without her before. So I sat down, and I started talking to this little boy across the aisle. Because I didn't know talking was against the rules. And then all of a sudden, the teacher came over, and she started to yell at me. It scared me, so I started to cry, and I ran to the door. Because I was going to run home to my mama. The teacher caught me and she brought me back and she said, you're too big a girl to be running home to your mama. And you have to learn to take your punishment when you break the rules. But I just kept right on crying. And I said, I want my roses back. I want my roses back. Teacher just said, when you give lovely things away, don't ever expect to get them back. Thank you so much for helping me, honey. That was very sweet. You're welcome, Lila. Here. That one's especially for you. Now, you take that home and you put it in a glass of water and it'll last for days and days. Thank you. Mm. All this is secret passion? Uh, no. Most of it's just tissue paper. But I couldn't afford but about that much, and I wanted it to look pretty. What'd you get? Here. Oh, that's lovely. What is it? Ah, surprise. She's gonna like it. Ken, you can be so sweet. Uh, I wanted to give her something nice. I think a lot of her. I guess I don't short all the time. I mean, we're always scrapping around here and everything. Hey, why don't you fix me one of those fancy drinks, okay. huh? Okay. There. Just like the Waldorf. Ah! No, no, no. Leave that in there. Yeah? Yeah. No? I think I'll take some beer. Oh. Hey. Dinner smells great. Well, don't eat anything. We'll spoil your appetite. Bet you don't know where I'm dancing. The living room. No. Guess yet. Hollywood. Nope. New York City. In some great nightclub. Hey, come on, dance with me. Whatever seems fair. Can you dance? Oh, sure. 
You right. look like a bitch. <laughs> okay, what are we gonna do? Well, do something. It's awful hard living in the same house with you. You're sleeping right downstairs from me. And you're young I and you're good. I want a lonely life. A lot of girls. I want you. I can talk to you. I can feel at home with you. You shouldn't say things like that to a girl if you don't mean I it. I do mean them, Lila. Don't you understand? I love you. Okay, even if you did, your mother... My would... mother, Lila, I can do what I want. I can leave here. I can stay. I can get married if I want. You don't be crazy. I want a woman like you. It makes no difference that you're older than me. Love me, Lila. Please, please love me. No. I don't forget everything you said. Okay. Okay, I'm not turning you down. I'm just trying to do what's right. I said okay! Oh, Kenny, please don't be mad at me. Listen, it's just that when I get my hopes up high and it doesn't work out, I, I, I just want to die. Once I even tried to die. I, I locked myself in a hotel room in, in North Dakota and I, I took sleeping pills. And some people found me and they took me to a hospital and they had to give me shock treatments. And I had to stay there for three months. Okay, when I got out of there, I said I was never going to do that again. I was ever going to do anything so silly. But I'm lonely, too. Please, please don't tease me. Oh, happy birthday, Ellen. Oh, thank you, Lila. Happy birthday, Mom. Thank you, son. I, I got dinner just about ready. Well, that's good. Why? Seems like summer's starting all over again, doesn't it? <laughs> I wish we had air conditioning here like they do at the hospital. I see you started celebrating already. Oh. Would you like a drink? Well, just a little. One of the uh, night nurses at the hospital was called away and I have to take her place tonight. Oh, that's too bad you have to work on your birthday. Well, I don't mind. I'm gonna take a shower. Now? Yeah. Why not now? No reason, I guess. No reason at all. Well, I'll, I'll go and get the salad ready, okay? Lila. Mm -hmm. uh, you and Kenny are here alone together quite often, aren't you? Not often, Helen, no. He can make himself very appealing, you know. I, I just hope he behaves himself when he's with you. Sure, you don't have to worry about anything like that. Kenny's not old enough to know his own mind, you know. I'll go and get the salad fixed. Kenneth, dinner's almost ready. Kenny, that's, that's so sweet of you. Well, I'll open it. <laughs> when young men give me presents, you don't see me hesitate. <laughs> Hope you haven't gone and done something foolish now. Oh, Helen, that's wild, a wristwatch. 21 jewels, lifetime guarantee. Night, you read that old watch of yours. Oh, Kenny, I... Well, you like it, don't you? Of course I do, but I just can't accept it. It isn't as though I don't appreciate your intention. I do, but, but it's just too expensive. I'll keep the watch your father gave me. It doesn't work. You keep saying it doesn't work. Well, well I can have it fixed. And, honey, if you want to get me something, get me a little something for the house. or Something that doesn't cost so much. It's my business what I give, and it's my business how much it costs me. Now, Ken, she didn't mean that. She wants your present. Really, she does, don't you, Helen? Kenny...
You'd squawk if I didn't get you something, and then when I do... Kenny, come back. Don't leave now. If you want me, you can find me at Jolly's. Kenny, we've got this lovely dinner fixed for you. Now, come on. Listen. Helen will take your present. I know she will. She can go to hell and find out what time it is there. You both can. Why didn't you take his present? He was just trying to make up for his father being gone. He's not his father, Lila. No, but every boy wants to be like his father. I should be getting back to the hospital. Oh, you shouldn't refuse a man's gift. It's not your business. Now, it just isn't. Hello? Yes, just a minute. It's for you. Who is it? I don't know. I didn't ask. Hello? Yes, this is her. Who are you? What, did you forget Daddy's voice? Baby. Hey, 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 slow down. I can't understand a word you're... I said, I'm not glad to hear from you. How could you go off and take all our money and leave us stranded like that, Rick? Oh, come on now. I came all the way here just to see you. I... Go to all the trouble of getting your address from the hotel. What are you going to do, cut me out? There's no way to treat Daddy, baby. Rick, you're not being fair. What? Oh, Rick, that's wild. <laughs> Meet me as soon as you can, huh? Sooner. Well, the Jayhawk Hotel, where else? No, Daddy, I won't be late. I promise. Hey, I'm still mad at you. Helen. Guess what? Ricky's found me a job. He's going to take me with him tomorrow. Well, that's wonderful news, Lila. I, I'm very happy for you. See you in the morning. Oh, I'll be home early tonight. I got a lot of packing and stuff to do. Oh, Lila, I thought you might want to spend the night with Ricky somewhere. Helen, you must think I'm awful. No, I realize you've led a completely different life from mine. I know you're a beautiful girl living in another kind of world. I'm very fond of you, and I try not to sit in judgment on people, so you and Ricky be together. I know you want to be. Helen, listen. I've always wanted to, to tell somebody how, I, how much I regret all the silly things that I've done in my life. You know, underneath, I think I'm really very good, and some of the things that have happened just don't seem to fit. You've no need to confess to me, Lila. But I want to. You're the only person I can tell these things to because you're the only person who listen to me. Well, you've got a brand new job now and a chance to start all over again. Forget those things. Forget everything. Now, I really do have to hurry. If Kenneth comes home before you leave, would you ask him to call me at the hospital and tell him I'm, I'm sorry about what happened? See you in the morning. Mom, come on, tell me about the job. Well, I heard Miami was where the action was, so I figured I'd go down there, save up enough dough to pay off Olga and Ronnie. But honey, that Florida action has been oversold. No. But I did manage to turn in the old car and make a down payment on this one. Please tell me about the job. I'll get to it. I'm so anxious. It's a great job. Pays three bills. Three? Yeah. What do we do, and where do we play? A couple of places, and it's three bills for each date. Shh. Do I sing and dance? Yeah, kind of. What do you mean, kind of? And Sean says sometimes we'll get more than three bills. Now, this first convention's a little squares bill, so you don't worry about it. He says in the fall, better. What are we going to do at a convention? Ricky, what kind of job is it? Well, look, baby, you trust me, don't you, huh? Well, don't you? Nothing for you to be squeamish about. 
After you've done it a couple of times, you won't have any bad feelings at all. I'll tell you what, if it make you feel better, you wear a mask. Huh? No, I don't want anything to do with it. Uh, look, I have been scrounging all over looking for better paying jobs, and nobody from here to Miami to Vegas back pays what Shaw's offering. Where else are you going to grab that kind of scratch? Where else and how else? Vicky, that's a sex act you're talking about. Maybe. No, I don't want any part of it. <laughs> They want, baby. You make me ashamed. Please go away, Ricky. Listen, go. you stupid. Get out of here. Now, Daddy told you what he was going to do next time you did something like that, didn't he? Huh? <laughs> My house ain't the local YMCA. You're not generous, Jelly. You've got to learn to give in this world. Get inside and get your stuff. Lila? Will you get inside and get your things? Come on. Get out of here, mister. Come on, Lila. Get out of here. All right, it's your grave, baby. I'll be at the Whittier in KC when you change your mind. I'll be over in a while. anymore, Lila. I promise. Kenny? Did you mean all the things you said before? Yes, I meant them. I'll take care of you. I promise. Good morning. Hello. Is Mrs. Baird in? 
No, I'm sorry. She had uh, night duty at the hospital last night. She didn't home yet. Oh. Oh, well, um, my mother baked this cake for her birthday, and I brought it over last night. No one was in. Well, I'll see that Helen gets it first thing, okay? Thank you. Hey, uh, you're Miriam Caswell, aren't you? Yes. Well, I'm Lila Green. Pleased to meet you. I'm enchanted. I just thought we ought to get acquainted, you know, seeing as how we're neighbors and all. Yes, that'd be very nice. Gee, I ought not be standing out here like this, and I don't want to keep you. I'd, I'd better be getting to work. Right down. Oh, hi, Jelly. Uh, hi. Is uh, Kenny here? Well, he's upstairs getting ready for work. Oh. Well, where did he go last night? Well, I don't know. He was supposed to come over to our house, and my mother fixed up a room for him and put clean sheets on a bed, and he, he never came. Listen, Jelly, I don't know anything about it. Well, I just figured that he owed me something for the trouble. Like a cigarette or two. Ah, thanks, Lila. Thank Listen, I'll tell Kenny you stop by, okay? Oh, uh, I wasn't in any kind of hurry. I just thought I'd hang around him. Very generous. Yeah. And, okay. Well, Bye, Jill. <laughs> well, you tell Kenny that I'll see him later. Though. Sure. Okay, I will. Right. Yeah. Bye. 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 Good morning. I love you. I got pancakes, sausage, and tomato juice. All away, okay? Hey, listen, I, I better get to work. I, I've been late every day this week. Oh, no. Now, if I'm going to pamper you, the least you can do is sit down at the table. Is that uh, jelly that was here before? Yeah. Hey, he said that his mother fixed a room for you. You should have called him. Don't worry about it. I'll, I'll take care of that. I'm not going to worry about anything today. I'm too happy. You know, sometimes something happens that just blows all the gray clouds away. And I can see the sun shining again. It gives me a good feeling in my heart. It makes me wish I could live forever. Aren't you happy? Yeah. Yeah, sure. I'm happy. Oh, you're young. You take a day of happiness for granted. I don't. Guess who I saw earlier this morning? Miriam Caswell. How did you know? I saw from the window. Oh. She brought Helen a birthday cake. Wasn't that nice? Boy, you know, she sure is dignified and kind of... What's that word? No. Demure. What's the matter? Didn't I fix your breakfast all right? Oh, no. Fine. Looks great. Well, something's the matter. No. Nothing honest. Annie. Mm hmm You know, maybe Helen won't mind our getting married at all. She might think it's the best thing in the whole world. Kenny, I can be so true to somebody because it's what I want more than anything, more than winning contests or being a movie star or anything like that. Because, you know, if you've got one person who loves and respects you, then you don't need love from a lot of people, do you? And I'll make you happy, Kenny, I promise. I'll make you the happiest man in the no, world. Well, I wonder what's right. I mean, I, re I really didn't make any promises, did I? I? I didn't really say that we'd get married. Like you said, you, you are a bit older, and that's bound to make a difference when you come right down.
Well, I meant the things I said. It's just that... Lila? Lila, listen to me. I'm sorry. pill you gave me made me feel kind of lightheaded. Well, it'll wear off soon. It was just phenol far up. You sure you feel well enough to travel? You know, you can stay here for a while if you like. I feel fine, Helen. Thank you. Lila, I hope you'll be happy. Listen, thank you for letting me stay, okay? Hi, Sandra. Where are you going? Oh, I have to go away, honey. You coming back? Sure, you bet. Hey, wait a minute. There. He'll protect you for a while anyway. Seeing you, ma'am. You all set? Yes. Lila, let me hear from you. Tell Kenny goodbye for me. And 
Come on, that wasn't so bad. You made a big hit. Why did you bring him here? Honey, I told you. I went back to the hotel and he cornered me. You what could I do? You didn't have to bring him. Honey. <laughs> Come on, listen, honey. There's nothing to be that mad. Oh, come on, kid. The show's over, huh? Why don't you wait outside? All right. I'll go up and get the money. What do you want, Kenny? I have to get ready. Why, Lila? Why not? Say my contest winning days were over, wouldn't you? Light, don't you? You're in my light. Look, Lila, listen, I, I've been thinking things over. It, it maybe it wouldn't be such bad ideas getting married. You know, we. Would you forget you ever knew me? No. Why not? You're a man, aren't you? Men can forget anything. It's a fact. It's not pretty, but it's true, like most facts are. Kenny, I want to tell you something. You remember that hospital I told you about in North Dakota? Well, listen, there was a psychiatrist there, and he said to me, Lila, you know what's the matter with you? You're emotionally immature. He said there are a lot of people like that. They go around all the time. They think the world is going to be rosy. Well, that was me, all right. But that's not me anymore. From now on, I accept things as they come, and I take things as they are, which is hard and ugly, just as hard and ugly as the faces of those men out there. So why don't you just run along home? You've got a long way to go, and I got to get ready for the next round. Because of me, everything happened, isn't it? Don't flatter yourself. My love. Even if I don't love you the way I thought I did, I care. I care a lot. And I can't stand to see you hurting yourself. See it. sure come prepared for emergencies, don't I? Listen, Fanny. It would be very easy for me to say, yes, I'll marry you. And I'll cling to you and I'll lean on you. But you've got your whole life ahead of you. It's not that important. think so later on. Besides, even if it wasn't, I am too old for you, you know. And it's not just years I'm talking about. So you go on home, okay? Uh, you don't have to worry about me. I'll be all right.
Hey, hey, look. What the hell are you doing? I'm walking, Rick. I've had it. You're what? Come on, let go of me. I said let go of me. You think I'm giving this money back to those clowns out there? You're not walking out on the best deal I ever had. You've had it when Daddy says you've had it. You can't stop me, Rick. Not now. I... No. You can't hurt me, Rick. Because somebody just showed me that he cared enough about me to make me care about myself. And I don't have to lean on you anymore. Because I got me, and me can take me wherever me wants to go. Listen, I know where you're going, baby. What are you going to do, huh? Sling hamburger and chili in some drive-in? Maybe you're going to play the five and dime circuit, huh? Or just bury yourself in one broken down beauty parlor after another, huh? No, baby, not you. Some people can make it alone. Not you. You've got to have somebody around. Go on, let's see him walk. Six months, baby, that's what I give you. You're gonna be cruising street corners looking for any trick you can find. And when you can't find them, you're gonna start climbing walls or taking those sleeping pills of yours. Or maybe this time you'll just jump out the window of some flea bag hotel. Six months with luck. Rick, you know something? You're just like everybody else. You're scared. Six months. this for you in the car. It's a present. It's lovely. Gee, Ken, it's just wild. It's a beautiful present. Thank you for giving it to me. Thank you for taking it. Goodbye, honey. And good luck. Good luck to you, too. 